Transmitting high atop of Florida's Peninsula at 108 feet, this is Alpha Mike. And you are listening to episode 202, Delusion, Part of Leftist Mental Illness. Today we will cover the one general question. Is a liberal a leftist? Is a leftist a liberal? That and more today on Raider Cop Podcast. How do you get in contact with us? It's easy. RaiderCop.com takes you to the website where you can hear all our audio episodes from 1 to 202 and including this one, 203. And also you can go to RaiderCopNation.com, the official website, and you get more information about us. Of course, we're also on social media. Hook us with hook up with us there anything but twitter we have twitters for the birds so we're not on that but everything else raider cop raider cop podcast or raider cop nation you will find us we encourage you to find us hook up with us and be part of the nation what do we have going on well the border is a fiasco Gas prices are soaring like Biden's votes in the wee hours of the morning. Higher taxes are on the way. Gun control bill passes Congress headed towards the Senate. And boys can be girls and play sports. Plus, much, much more in the Bolshevik states of woke the country that you and I both live in today. Today's episode, we're going to start uncovering a lot of the propaganda out there with the left or the liberals. Are they the same or are they different? Is it a regular pizza or a Sicilian? That is the subject today. But first, we're going to hit the Word of the Week, where the book of James, chapter 1 and verse 12, brings us some knowledge. Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, He will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. James 1.12 And of course, you can hear more on what I read on all our episodes on AWOL Monday. They will be sent out every twice a month, every other uh, Sunday night and you can hear it by going to Radio Cop Podcast and get some spiritual growth as we say don't stay a midget don't say stay small you want to grow in all aspects of your life and that includes spiritual it's important the question that is before you today In our outline formats are the following. What is a liberal? What is a leftist? Why we should know and understand the difference. The council culture. Control. The list. Banning speech. Cancel. Or removing apps on play stores. The corporation. And liberals. What 
is this outline? Well, it's going to explain the difference between two waggy worlds. So put on your straight jacket and come with me on a trip where we will examine crazy worlds. <laughs> Episode 203, Delusion, part of leftist mental illness, and we are ready to dive into the wacky world of the Democratic Party. Currently, it has a split team on the roster, liberals and leftists, and we'll discuss what the difference is, but First, I want to answer the question that I've been giving to you this whole podcast. Is there a difference? And the answer is yes. And instead of me just reading Webster's definition of leftist and liberal, I'm going to give you a little bit of their criteria, who they are and what they stand for. I'll give you a, a better understanding. This is their modus operandi, what they stand for, who they are, their fabric, or their ethos in living. First question up, what is a liberal? A liberal, believe it or not, stands for pro-capitalism. You see, the bigger capitalism, the more money, the more taxes they can charge, so they can promote more people on their side. Uplift everybody. They're one big happy family. But in order to have a bigger government, you need a bigger tax base. That means they're pro-capitalism. They believe in, and, and as I said, a bigger government. Bigger can always get bigger with liberals. Liberals oppose. That means for our Democrats out in California, in those areas, in New York, that means they're against. Opposed means against socialism. It goes against their ethos, their principles of fairness and equality. Liberals believe in the national state. What? Of course, you need a national state in order to build their crazy lunatic empire of liberalism. You can't be against the country. You have to be with the country. It's just your wacky ideas will be paid by the country. Liberals believe, get closer to the uh, speaker so you can hear this one. Liberals believe in defending of borders. They believe in an immigration policy. Now, of course, their belief in that immigration policy may differ from ours or the conservative right, we'll say. Their numbers might be a little higher than anybody else's. But they do believe in controlling the border. They do believe in fair and equitable process to come into the country. And lastly, liberals are proud of being Americans and support Superman because... Superman has told us. 
the writers of Superman and all these cartoons were liberals. So now let's take a look at what a leftist is. Now, a leftist is that person that dabbles in the not seen, the imagined. The twilight zone, let's just say. They dwell in things that, well, to put it to you the best way, they're experts at bamboozling you. And they'll bamboozle you into believing that, well, you know, it's a little bit of like socialism, but ours is a refined socialist program, okay? It's not that other stuff that's out there. But deep down in their subconscious, they also secretly believe that they're communists. But they won't say that. No, will they admit it. Leftists oppose capitalism. They don't like it. Bankers and people making money. No, 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 no. They want to control Control is their name of the game. Control the, the production line. Everything that the country produces, including its people, leftists want to control. They're big advocates for socialism, especially socialist programs. Leftists value left-wing policies that are so far left you'll lose yourself trying to examine what it is. Leftists are, they like to define people by classes. Poor versus rich. White versus black. North versus south. Get it? They're dividers because that's how they operate. Leftists believe in open borders. Knock down those barriers and those walls while they live in gated communities, of course. And they can do one world order. Of course, it'll be part of socialism, communism, but that's what they believe in. They despise the character of Superman because they will only accept one world view. Superman is like from another planet, but he's really American. So I don't know. We believe in a world view. And they believe in works without a border no border none all over the world everything should be open to business so there's the difference oh and by the way leftists do not like nationalists because it goes against their world order so that kind of breaks down what we're talking about So I described liberal, I described leftist. Now our third bulletin here today, why we should understand the difference. So often I'm listening to conservative podcasts and television, and I hear the commentator call certain people leftist and liberal and kind of interchange and intertwine the same person under different titles like if they're synonymous and they're the same but they're not I just read to you the ethos to each one what they actually believe in so obviously they are a little nutty on both sides but they're not that sibyl crazy that they don't know what they stand for So when I hear this, I cringe. The other day I saw on Newsmax on a Saturday edition. I forgot the gentleman's name and I apologize. I'll look it up and I'll put it on the post on the show notes. 
And he does a Saturday episodes on during the day. I believe he's a former Navy SEAL. Very nice guy. And he had Alan Gershowitz on, the famous lawyer, which is a known liberal. And in the communication with him, answering, uh, giving him a, a question, he kind of mixed both together. And Alan Berchowitz corrects him and says, their liberals don't stand for that. Leftists do. And you're constantly going back and forth, labeling us under one brush. And he was so surprised when he actually heard it. Now, sometimes on the conservative right, a lot of people believe that they're both the same. Don't listen. But they're not. The reason we should know the difference is that way we can identify who the enemy really is. The other reason is I actually believe that in the future, liberals will come to the rescue of this country. You see, the left will go so far left, so far reaching into the outer galaxy planets, that liberals will be outraged and say, we had enough of this. Now, it is common belief and truth that the Democratic Party was stolen by the leftists. They bamboozled and ransacked the liberals. The liberals got mugged, and many of them didn't even realize it. They are currently... 50 or 60 days into their new president's term and they're starting to squint as they look at the television on nightly news and their ears are bothering them on what they're listening to as the leftist world becomes much more unhinged and crazy Liberals liberals are quietly objecting. But it, it will get to a boiling point four years from now. Cancel culture. Cancel culture is something that the leftists believe in. But liberals don't. Now, you've all had the sad reports... P.P. Le Pew, the, the, the cartoon character, he got whacked. Mr. Potato, Mr. Potato Head, he got whacked. The list goes on and on. It, it's just horrible what's going on out there. Aunt Jemima got it. And you start to wonder, when does sanity come back? Liberals are disturbed by some of this. Leftists aren't. Liberals don't really have a problem with Aunt Jemima because the actress herself didn't have a problem with it. But leftists do because they don't like your history. They want to erase it and reset the whole thing. Cancel culture is marching forward, burning books, hating cartoons, telling us what we can and cannot say, and of course, what we should believe in. If you disagree with them, they cancel you. They go after you. It's the leftist way. Liberals are outraged. We stand for fair treatment of all people, whether we agree with them or not. See the conflict? The leftists believe in control, control of production. Everything that a country produces from workers, students, manufacturing, 
economy, everything leftists believe they should be controlling. Every aspect, everything is on the table. They want to be in total control to everything. Leftists believe in something called the list. Now, the list is quite ancient. It goes way back to the old Soviet days. Cubans did it too. It was the list of people that they were going to go get. You know, imprison them, torture them, put them in camps, make them disappear. Because they really didn't agree with the left. So now the left wants to get rid of them. The left has a term for these people. They call them useless idiots because many of them are liberal. They were on us, right? They helped us. They supported us. And then we turned on them. And they're too stupid to realize it. Liberals don't understand that they're about to get slaughtered by the left. The left believes in banning speech. They have rackets now. They have strong mafia ties to groups like Antifa and Black Lives Matter. They go out there and if they don't like what you're selling or saying or doing, they'll boycott you. They're scared of the Jesus at anybody. But they'll get rid of you. They'll put you on the list. Leftists love list. Liberals don't understand why are we why should we have a list? <clears throat> Is a list even constitutional? There's a difference. Leftists cancel and remove apps from Google, Andrew, Android phones, and Apple from their Apple platform, iOS. Cancel, get rid of it. You can't have it. It's bad. Of course, they disguise it as national security for the safety of the country. But it's really a part of the list. I'm going to tell you what you can hear. I'm going to tell you what you can say. How did Uncle Joe say it? Now, 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 if you behave yourself from here to 4th of July, maybe you can have a small little picnic. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. The left believe in corporations. What? Yep. More so than the liberals. Liberals don't really hate corporations. Remember, they do believe in capitalism. But they believe in concepts like there should be more women in corporate America. But not to destroy corporate America. Leftists need corporations to disguise themselves as government and take people's freedoms away. Control people. Companies like Apple, Google, Twitter, Facebook. Ah, sound familiar to some of these companies, don't they? And they can control the lines of production. What you see, what you read, what you believe, what you... What... What, what, what? Everything. But they need those corporations. They've scared them, bamboozled them, and twisted their arm. Do you remember the summer of love when uh, Americans went out and protested and they were joined by Antifa and Black Lives Matter as they burned American city after city? And... During their moment of love and chaos in America, they started to scream and yell at these companies, these cell phone companies. And one by one, like little girls, 
the CEOs started having these guilt feelings for being white. It was pathetic. And they were given 20, 30, 40 million, 50 million. Money is no object to whatever they wanted. Better than the mob. See, the mob got prosecuted, RICO charges for these shakedowns they were doing. But now Black Lives Matter and Antifa. That's solid gold. Nothing will happen to them. Liberals believe in concepts of saving the ocean, picking up the world's garbage, saving the titi fly, and stopping, believe it or not, overreaching government. You see, liberals will be real quick in taking you to court if they think that the government might be overreaching a little bit. But leftists love to do overreaching as far as their arms and their limbs will take them because it kind of destroys the fabric of America. It destroys the fabric of the Constitution. And every time they overreach and they are allowed to grab something, they make our Constitution a little weaker. So the difference between a liberal and a leftist is huge. But there are so many Americans that believe that they're the same. Again, to recap what we've gone through. The Democratic Party up in prior to 2016 were progressives masqueraded term for saying liberal and progressiveness had a nice touch to it but during the 2016 presidential election one woman completely destroyed almost 80 years of work on creating progressiveness. And that was Hillary. Single-handedly, the woman was despised by more people in more countries and more planets anywhere. People hated her. And as a result, the left moved into the party. You see, Bernie was winning the primary in 2016. But we all know, we've all read the WikiLeak release of emails. They stole it from Bernie. And the Bernie bros, they didn't like that. So the Bernie bros, very upset. But Uncle Bernie, after a while, he kind of forgave them. Coincidentally, brought two new cars and a brand new mansion. He had been saving. But what they really did after the 2016 election, the left, was bum rush the front door and remove the liberals from the Democratic Party. Slowly but surely, they were losing positions policies, and even creative thought. It was spinning and spiraling out of control so fast, the liberals couldn't put their head around it. Of course, with the summer of love and the burning of America, along with Antifa and Black Lives Matter, the left had power. More power than the liberals because, you see, their power base was offensive, rude, and violent. Liberals didn't stand for any of this. Many liberals were lost castaways like on Gilligan's Island with no party. But I'm not voting for that guy. You know, the one with the yellow hair. I just won't vote. 
Well, I'll vote for some crazy wacko. I'll write him in. Some liberals just say, but we all got to get along. We get along. We'll negotiate. We'll talk. But it never happened. Today, we're all witnessing the liberal being pushed out of the White House by the leftists. Uncle Joe is so delusional that he himself is calling his vice president president. Not once, but three times. With an exclamation point at the end of each one. He's making an affirmative decision. He's the actor, she's the president. Uncle Joe's on his way out. But he's not leaving by himself. He's not the only one packing his bags. The entire liberal party within the Democratic Party is packing their bags. They are eating each other. Ex Andrew, he'll tell you. Salazzo, from the godfather better known as Dumbo Cuomo, governor of New York, is being eaten alive by the left. He's on the list. He did it. Get him. And Cuomo's hanging on by a thread. The left is moving into much bigger things. Not only are they controlling more and more the Democratic Party, they are also controlling more and more government and more and more of the executive branch. They'll be back for the other two branches. The judicial they have somewhat. Got to work on it. Nancy's been crippling us. So we'll be whacking... Nancy over the head with a broom. But, uh, you know, the court system, we're going to have to deal with them. We uh, we kind of fell behind on that one. But they'll be back. And liberals are just with their mouth open saying, what the hell just happened? But what happened was you lost your party and now you're losing your country. We're all headed towards a socialist, communist takeover. And there are still many Americans that say, this is crazy, this is never going to happen here. What's everybody crying about? He's only going to be there for four years. Really? He's, he's almost gone. He's, he, he, in, in a blink of an eye, he's almost gone. They're going to get rid of him. If anybody thinks he's going to last four years falling down the escalator at Air Force One, you're nuts. Kamala ain't having any of this. She's going to be large and in charge. But now the question is, who's going to be the vice president when Kamala moves up to and shoves Joe right out of the chair that's the question most likely there'll be another leftist as more and more liberals get put out on their ass the saddest part of this whole thing is to see liberals take leftist positions even though they're against those positions they're actually against their ethos But they masquerade them and they kind of try to tongue twist that they're for it because equality, it's better for everybody. But inside them, it's against their own principles. Well, those people are just waking up in the Bolshevik states of woke. And what they're waking up to is their nightmare. They've been mugged. And they don't like where we're going. It's so bad that some of these liberal news media outlets are starting to miss old Donald. 45. They wish 45 was back. 
and they could have their love-hate relationship with him. I don't like this about Joe. You see, you're not allowed to say anything bad about Joe and anything negative. And God forbid when Camilla gets into power, God help you if you even think a negative thought about that woman. You'll be executed on the spot. So, there is a significant difference between a liberal and a leftist. The more conservatives on the right that understand the difference and attack those people that need to be attacked, AOC, leftists, shoot away. It's not literal to those that want to report me to the Google police. It's a metaphor. Okay, before... You know, hello. She's a leftist. Principles are on the left. $15 an hour, Bernie. He's a leftist. You got to know the difference or else you don't know who the enemy is. Leftists are evildoers. Liberals are useful idiots to the evildoers. Makes sense? Well, it does to me. The more we understand who they are, the faster we can regain our country back. There's a lot of things happening in this country, and they're not being done by coincidence. This is a plan that has been in the works on the left for over 80 years. And the straw that broke the camel's back, that might be a racist term, by the way, was Hillary Clinton running for president in 2016, the world's worst candidate, hated by cities, states, countries, and planets all over. But they put her on the ticket. And then they proceed, proceeded to mug the true and real winner of that election on the primary side. The leftists knew they had a move. Their shining moment was now or never. They were gaining strides in the Democratic Party more and more. But they could not allow the theft to go unanswered. They had to take it back by force. And they did. To levels that we're seeing today, which are shocking. Gas prices have gone up. Uncle Joe has put hundreds of thousands of people out on a job on a stroke of a pen. And... If it wasn't so sad, it'd be comical. But you're not allowed to say anything negative because you'll be put on the list and your speech will be banned. They'll control you because they control the lines of production and you have to produce something. They'll make you. It failed in many places. It's in Venezuela, it's in Cuba, it's in China. We saw it in the Soviet Union. It doesn't have a success record. But here are the useful idiots in this country giving leftists, socialists, communists position to come in. How many people in this country can't wait for the destruction of this country? How sad. And of course, another bunch of useful idiots, the right, the rhinos, for crumbs, for pure crumbs have sold out our country. 
but believe that there is a God and God doesn't miss anything. You can't really say that things could have gone different if this and if that. We can only deal with the reality of what we have. Today, more than ever, we can see a better picture than we did, let's say, three or four months ago. And three or four months from now, the picture will be even clearer. Eventually, the picture will be so clear that you'll actually notice the noose around your neck. What's up next? Well, you know, our agendas have been a little on the wishy-washy side because I'll be honest, I needed a break. And um, so we we kind of pushed back actually two series. But nevertheless, we're, we're coming back on track. I'm just hitting uh, Sundays and Wednesdays now and uh, getting into the groove of that. And that's going to help us out. Some people have asked me, why in the world did you do three episodes a week anyway? Well, we did it because we had to analyze it. So you had to do an empirical study to see if it was feasible. Now, it's not that it's not feasible. It is labor intense. So what I'm trying to say is a capitalist position, in order to go anything above a two episodes a week there has to be a profit margin and there's no profit here and anything over three or three or more episodes needs a staff that means there has to be an income a steady income research and development is important And uh, editing and all that other stuff is secondary, but it is as important, but not as much in my eyes. Your research is everything. People can't wait to throw a flag and say penalty. But uh, when you start pushing three episodes, and to give you a little understanding, one episode could generate up to six to eight hours of labor. Of course, not a maybe in one day, but um, it, it, it's, it's a lot if, when, you, when you come to it. It's just not, well, well, the show is only 42 minutes. What's he talking about? There's so much that has to happen prior. So you have to do your research, your development, your outline, all your script. You got to develop your poster. You got to get it on social media. You've got to analyze the statistics from the last shows and to the, that way you can kind of see if you're going upwards, sideways, down, around, which, which way is the arrow going. And, and then, of course, you can actually fund some of this with advertising and stuff that we've done little to none almost, you know, we've done just experimental stuff with it back in the day on Facebook and Twitter and uh, <coughs> it didn't work, I can tell you. It's a sham. <coughs> so, a lot of this is just by being consistent, in my opinion. So, back to what we were talking about, the schedule. <coughs> so, this is uh, up next. We are going to have uh, Kilo Sierra. We're going to be talking about guns. So, most likely our next Two or three episodes will be <clears throat> about guns. Don't mess with Texas uh, preemption. Oh, I, I can't I almost forgot schizophrenic Rob. He's not crazy. That's coming up. And uh, this is in the month of March. What I'm talking about. I'm not really giving you dates, but that's the month of March. Uh, our Wise Guys series. Remember, we left the gangster world and. Costa Nostra and we're in the biker world now so we're going to come up with uh, in the month of March with the outlaw motorcycle gang or crew or club or whatever you want to call it and um, so that's the lineup uh, for March I'm not going to give you specific dates but I'm going to be doing some uh, rearranging of the schedule 
So up next, because I got to tell you what's up next, right? Well, it's most likely going to be schizophrenic Rob. He's not crazy. And then we'll go into the gun series and uh, the Wise Guys series. As always, it has been my honor and pleasure to be your host on Radio Cop Podcast. Continue to pray for yourself because without you in the game, we have nothing. Continue to pray for your family, your community, the law enforcement agencies that serve you. And most importantly, continue to pray for the United States of America. This is Alpha Mike, and I'm out.